Hello everybody out there at YouTube land. Today we're going to take a look at Flintstones number 4, the 2016 comic. It's written by Mark Russell and drawn by Steve Pugh. A brief recap for those of you who haven't read these comics or haven't seen my previous reviews. I've been going in chronological order and reviewed the first three, and this is the fourth one. Just so you know, this is a brand new look on these classic characters. While it feels like it was written for people who grew up watching the cartoon as children, this series has matured along with the audience. So a lot of the themes are basically something you're not going to fully appreciate unless you're an adult. In fact, the comic itself is rated teen and up. I'm not entirely sure why. There is a lot of humor and lighthearted comedy and colors and whatnot. Uh, it's very well drawn and bright and vibrant. I suppose it's rated teen and up um, for violence and, you know, talking about war and post-traumatic stress. And, you know, you just have to have a certain level of life experience to fully enjoy this comic, in, in my opinion. It talks about all sorts of themes from the value of money to the purpose of religion and morality. And beyond that, deals with all sorts of issues such as marriage, as we're going to see in this issue. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and take a look at The Flintstones, number four, 2016. Here we go. All right, well, this fourth issue is called Domestications, and I think you'll see why. It deals with both how animals were domesticated, and it also talks about marriage and relationships quite a bit. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the first page. At the top of the page, it says 1,000 years before Flintstone. So it's got a saber-toothed tiger and a small dinosaur, and they're talking while watching, uh, looks like some men eat around a fire. And the saber-tooth says, man, that looks so good. And the dinosaur is like, I'm not so sure about those creatures. And uh, the saber-tooth is like, oh, come on, they look harmless. And the dinosaur says, oh yeah, remember what happened to Kevin? And it shows uh, Kevin falling for a trap that the men set. And the uh, dinosaur is like, that could be Kevin they're eating right now. And the saber tooth is like, trust me, I, I don't trust them, but I haven't eaten for three days. I'm going to have to risk it. So he goes down to the fire. Oh, it has a little flashback of his, of why he was kicked out of his uh, herd or whatever, his pack of other saber tooths and he's like you know I was kicked out of the saber tooths apparently for cheating on his saber tooth wife and he has no choice so he's gonna throw in with the men and the the dinosaur says you're throwing in with the murder apes and the next thing you see is the saber tooth walking down towards the fire and the caveman says oh come on kitty it's okay meat for you <laughs> and he says I love you kitty and he picks up and he's hugging it and the saber tooth is just thinking, I prefer you to starvation. <laughs> Immediately after seeing how animals are domesticated, we jump to Dino on the next page. He's the beloved dog of dinos dinosaur dog of the Flintstones, and you probably remember him from the cartoon show. Pebbles is playing a uh, fetch in the yard with him. And he's always been one of my favorite characters. In fact, I really love how they handle the animal characters in this comic and in the show itself, too. In the old cartoon, I think they've got a lot of personality and they're really, really fun. And a lot of the jokes and more lighthearted humor revolve around the animals, uh, Dino included. So while Pebbles is in the yard playing with Dino, playing fetch the bone, she's throwing a bone, he's going and getting it. Um, Fred and Wilma are watching the TV news and it's talking about this new thing called marriage because apparently beforehand in this comic anyway people just like mated with each other they didn't necessarily worry about you know how many partners they had or anything like that so it's talking about this new fad called marriage and apparently Fred and Wilma are some of the first people in the world to be married so the next panel they are going outside they're actually going to be going to a marriage retreat to learn more about it 
and talk to other married people because they're some of the first ones. And it looks like they're leaving Pebbles over with uh, Barney and Betty at the Rebel House and she's going to be staying with them for a week. And just on a little side note, while they are outside, some passers-by kind of heckle them and give them a hard time for being married. They, they are a little heavy-handed about it in this issue. They're pretty blatant about gay marriage and whatnot. I, I thought it was kind of cool how they were going to use, you know, regular marriage as their vehicle for doing that. But as you'll see, they just out and out are in favor of gay marriage, which I don't necessarily, you know, I don't have a problem with that, but it's certainly very political. And this run of comics has generated some controversy for its politics. Okay, so Fred and Wilma head out on their way to go to the marriage retreat, and they leave Pebbles behind to stay with the Rubbles. On their way out of town, they're driving out of town, and they see two guys on the street corner talking, and Fred knows them. So they stop, and they get out, and they start talking to them, and they're older than Fred and Wilma are. So let's see, the two guys, they say, oh, look, it's little Freddy, he's grown up, and uh, where are you guys heading? And they say that they're going to the marriage retreat. And the two guys say, oh, that's funny, we're also thinking about getting married, and maybe we'll stop by and see you guys. And then um, so they said, that sounds good, and then Fred and Wilma get back in the car and head out, and Wilma says, they seem nice, and Fred says, yeah, I've known those guys my entire life. And as they're driving out of town, it's a pretty good joke. Uh, it's kind of funny. The sign just says, Agriculture. The food just pops right out of the ground. Uh, because most of these people were hunter-gatherers before they found um, farming and they settled down here in Bedrock. So the next page, we're at the marriage retreat, and there's Fred and Wilma and about four or five other couples. There's an older couple that have been married for about 30 years, and then there's a young couple that are thinking about getting married amongst some other, uh, and then a couple other couples that don't talk too much. So the priest, it's uh, by the way, it's the priest we saw from before who had peaches and whatnot and this has Gerald now as their deity. He, he founded that, the Church of Gerald. So it's the same priest as in the previous issues. And they're at the marriage retreat, and um, the older couple is kind of fighting with each other and stuff, and they're uh, basically, the priest was having a hard time because they're supposed to set the example for everyone else. And then he asks, um, does anyone else have misgivings about marriage? And then he says, Fred, what marries you? And this is a really uh, kind of powerful scene. I really like the Fred character, and partly because he's complex, this really shows his uh, a part of who he is. And in any case, the priest had asked him, so what worries do you, um, what misgivings do you have about marriage? And Fred says, that Wilma will stop loving me. Marriage is like insurance. You enter into a lifetime commitment because you're afraid of the future, but does marriage mean she will love me forever, or is it just my attempt to keep her from finding someone better? Is marriage really a sacred bond, or just the illusion of security? And no one knows what to say to this. Uh, the other people don't say anything, and the priest just says, Okay, uh, thanks, Fred. And then he says, oh, did I mention their zip lining? Basically changing the subject. So the next page, we have a couple pages where it flips back to the Flintstone household at night. And all the humans are gone. You know, Pebbles is with the Rubbles and the other uh, Fred and Wilma are at their retreat. So it has all the animals um, that make up their appliances talking. Like we've got the dinosaur lizard thing who is a garbage disposal and the armadillo who's a bowling ball and the moose that uses a hat rack and, and all these things. Uh, Dino's there too, he's the dog. He's the only one who's just like a regular pet and the animals who are appliances kind of envy him for that and so they, they treat him a little differently. Which is, you know, kind of sad but if you think about it it's kind of interesting too like they set up this whole dynamic and backstory for these animals that were always just kind of joke in the cartoon they were joke appliances so anyways it's nighttime 
and all of the appliances have gone to sleep and someone in the closet says hello are you still there could someone open the door please help I'm scared of the dark and the bowling ball which is an armadillo wakes up and opens the door and he <laughs> and he said and uh, it's a little elephant it's a little pink elephant like peaches and he says his name is vacuum and they keep him in the closet and bowling ball tells him his name's bowling ball and basically they decide that they're friends now so it's the next day on the next page pebbles is having breakfast with the rubble family and her and bar uh, sorry bam bam are on the way to school they're kind of talking about what it's like uh, having parents that are married so uh, she says do you ever feel strange having parents that are married and he says no not really I don't have anything to compare it to and she says sometimes I wonder though all this pairing up does seem kind of arbitrary why two parents what does that mean and he says it means you can get a second opinion to you after class so Bam Bam just doesn't want to talk about it uh, then they're in class and there's the same professor we saw before uh, uh, who launched the chimp into space and he's telling them what he thinks makes up the universe. Uh, and then the next page we have a full page where it's at the bedrock town hall and there's all these angry people who are upset about marriage and that people are getting married. So they're basically, they represent the anti-gay people in our uh, modern society, although in, in this they're opposed to basically monogamy. So it's, it, you know, it's a little bit subtle and I like the subtlety. I, I like it when they take a little bit more of a subtle angle to things. Um, so that's, you know, that that's kind of cool, I guess. Anyways, so back at the marriage retreat, uh, see, things aren't going too well. The priest isn't having much luck convincing them. He's, he's trying to convince the young people that they should get together so they'll always have someone when they're old and whatnot. And he's basically just... He's, he's not doing a good job convincing him <laughs> and he's having a lot of issues with that so he's trying to convince well he's telling Fred and Wilma why they should get married and he said that you know that basically it's for civilization is why the priest wants to do it so that people have babies and he's talking about how the man is in charge and stuff and Wilma says, I never even considered divorce until this moment. So, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty good. At this point, the anti-marriage protesters sh from the town hall show up at the marriage retreat and start arguing and yelling at the people there. And they actually break down and they start fighting somewhat. And then the priest breaks into this impassioned speech where he's talking about, he admits that he's wrong, he... I admit it, marriage could turn out to be a horrible mistake, but how are we supposed to deal with a changing world if we don't try new things? And all this stuff, and he actually convinces the protesters to leave. And they, they stop protesting and leave. And then, right then, uh, the two guys that Fred has known since childhood show up. And they are there, and they say they want to try marriage, and they want to get married. And the priest says, no way. So Wilma's like, what about that plea for tolerance and understanding you made like three seconds ago? And the priest says, but I, well, I was in the minority then. So Fred steps up to the priest and he says, let me be clear, I don't do anything if Adam and Steve aren't welcome. And that's another thing about them not being subtle. These two guys are literally named Adam and Steve. Um, I know the Flintstones wasn't, you know, ever very subtle. They always used a lot of puns and stuff, but... You know, this is clearly written for an older audience, so I, you know, I, I would like it better if they had been a little more subtle. But anyways, their backstory is actually kind of cool, and that's one thing I'll give them credit for. That's why Fred cares about them so much, is when he was a boy in this hunter-gatherer tribe, they talk about how Adam and Steve didn't have children, so they were able to help take care of the other children, you know in this instance they helped Fred climb up this cliff and stuff so he really appreciates them and whatnot so the priest says wow I guess I have a lot of thinking to do but I probably won't and he walks away so the last two pages are by far my favorite and this is one great thing about this comic is it doesn't always end with like a, a moral 
you know, it doesn't tie up with like a nice little moral like it sometimes does, but it's really realistic. And what it almost always ties up with is Fred and Wilma's relationship uh, getting stronger. So they're leaving the marriage retreat, Fred and Wilma, and Wilma says, let's never do this again. And he's, and Fred says, so do you still want to be married? And she says, Fred, I want you. I really don't care what we call it. So that's really sweet. Um, and they talk uh, a bit more. I won't go through all their dialogue, but that's the gist of it. They're, they're stronger than ever before. And they arrive back at home and it's Dino. You gotta love Dino. He runs yapping up to the door and gets a belly rub from Pebbles. <laughs> and the really funny thing is all of the appliances that are, you know, animals are looking on and they're just like, oh, I'm filled with disgust. So that's, uh, see, that's the Flintstones number four. We covered it. So be sure to stay tuned for number five. I'm going to get the shadow, uh, the Batman, the shadow review out. I've already got some of the material together I need for that. And of course the fifth Flintstones will be coming up pretty soon. We've got our ongoing series, our artist series. Right now we've done two reviews. We've got Alex Ross and George Perez. And also um, on the discussion page or in the comments on those videos, I'm looking for more artists to profile. So please make your requests for that. And um, let me know in the comments here what you think about these Flintstone reviews. And if you've read them and how you like them. Do you like how they've changed it and made it more mature and political? Or do you wish they'd made it more like the uh, cartoon show? Well, I guess that's all for now. Thanks, and as always, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps me out a great deal. Thank you.